Hey everyone! So I wanted to hop on here for a couple of minutes because I believe um, that I've stumbled across a little bit of information slash revelation. I believe it's from the Lord. I don't believe it's just something that I came up with and I want to share it with you. So I'm just going to say a quick prayer to open us up because I want to make sure that my words come from the Holy Spirit, not just from my head. So here we go. Father God, thank you so much for every person watching this video. Thank you for the platform that we get to use to spread um, the hope and knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ. Um, thank you that we can reach people um, with the hope of his return. I pray that you would bless this time and that uh, every person that hears this, uh, that it, they would just be blessed immensely and filled with hope. And I ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. So first of all, what I wanted to talk about was the Feast of Trumpets. Okay, like, so, and this is something a lot of Christians aren't taught about in church. So there's seven of these feasts that have biblical, biblically prophetic meaning to them. And I've just delved into these feasts, like learning about them very recently. And there's this feast called the Feast of Trumpets. And that is the very next feast that Jesus himself has not fulfilled. So the Feast of Trumpets is a very, very prophetic kind of um kind of feast that symbolizes Jesus returning for his church uh, before the tribulation. So that's the very next feast he has to fulfill. Now, a Bible verse I had always heard of is the, the verse, and I'll put it actually, I'll um, go back and I'll put the verses into this video so that I can show you, because I, I want you to test me with the scripture. So, and I also want to test myself with the scriptures. So I'm going to kind of like flash some scriptures um, into this video and then go back and upload it all into YouTube. It says in Matthew 24, I forget which verse, but of that day, no one knows the day or the hour, right? But the thing about it is that specifically I've learned has to do with the Feast of Trumpets. So there's a lot of other watch people out there that have introduced this concept to me um, virtually. And one of them is Barry Scarborough. Um, all the other, you know, there's a, there's a lot of other watchmen and watch women that have been putting out some really useful information. That actually has to do with specifically the Feast of Trumpets and the other fall fe festivals, the fall feasts. Sorry, I'm really tired, guys. So just kind of try to bear with me. Um, so that particular feast this year was not the date we thought it was. We thought it was like, September 19th or something. Um, and it turns out that they actually had to add a, um, I think it's called an ADAR, and it's 29 days. So it's almost a month. They had to add a month. And let me tell you why. Because we use a Gregorian solar calendar, and they use a lunar calendar that you that it actually um utilizes the constellations in the sky you see back in the day when jesus was born the wise men uh they they navigated from the sky and they followed the star of bethlehem see that was always um god's time on this earth is it, it's his plan in the in the sun moon and stars so if what i understand like god really wants them to have their feasts on the right days so that verse that I'll put on here later of not knowing the day or the hour has to do with the feasts being moved over during what's called intercalated years or pregnant years. And you can kind of do your own research on that, but that's what I learned. So I watched a couple of different videos on what would be the real Feast of Trumpets because I found out from Barry Scarborough, who's really awesome, thank you Barry for all, all, you, all that you do for us, um, that October 17th and 18th may actually be a feast day. So I was trying to research it, I'm like, I need to verify this because the other Feast of Trumpets that's probably in all of our phones, and I forget the name of it, I'm sorry, I, yeah, I don't remember the name of it, but the Feast of Trumpets. Um, come to find out, it is on the 17th and 18th of October. So a lot of people back in September were probably like, oh man, he didn't come back. And we're... Here's the thing, guys. It can't be, if he's going to come back on Feast of Trumpets, which I can put some resources um, down like in the comment section of good arguments for Jesus coming back on the Feast of Trumpets. Um, that means he has to come back this year. 
Okay, because the fig tree generation that saw Israel become its own nation, that is in Matthew 24. I'll put some, I'll put those verses in here for you guys. That fig tree generation is over in May. And it gives us seven years for the tribulation, and then that generation will be 80 years. And, and in the Bible, a generation is 80 years long, so minus seven years for the tribulation. And guess what? What do you come up with? Some of you guys are good at math, right? 73! So that generation is um, coming on its 73rd birthday, which May, that's when Israel became its own nation. So we're getting really close. So there's that fig tree sign. So you know it has to be this, it has to be this fall, folks. It's not gonna be next fall. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in the um, in this video for you guys. I think I already said that. So the Feast of Trumpets is October 17th, 17th and 18th. So what I did was I researched a little bit more about it, and I found out that the Feast of Trumpets has to take place on a new moon. So guess what? The new moon. I'll show you a little chart. The new moon cycle. Oh, where is it? It's over here somewhere. Here it is. Look at this. Okay. The new moons will be on what date? The 16th and the 17th. Okay. So guess what? Saturday for Feast of Trumpets is going to be a very high watch day because that's the first, that's the first day of Feast of Trumpets. Folks, we're getting close. I highly doubt I'm wrong. You can do your own research, but I can put down some, some links for some people that, that argue for, you know, Jesus returning on Feast of Trumpets. It's like people that are Messianic Jews, they say, yeah, as a return on Feast of Trumpets. And the thing is, like, I think, like, over the years I've heard a little bit about the Jewish feast, but I didn't really know the significance they had. And, and to be honest, the church, probably out of ignorance, hasn't really done the best job at explaining the significance of the feasts for some reason. So a lot of us are left in the dark. See, I'm starting to notice that I don't think God wants us to be in the dark about when he's coming back. I think that based on what I'm figuring out from scripture and what he's showing me, that it's his heart to know when he's going to return. Okay. Or at least a really, a really short time frame of when he's going to return. Okay. Think about the verses that talk about the signs of the end. Signs in the sun, moon, and stars, right? Why in the world would God want to keep away his return from us if he wants to show us signs in the sun, moon, and stars, like the eclipse that happened in 2017, and, um, and there's supposed to be another eclipse seven years in the middle of the tribulation, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. And that's exactly seven years, a number of completion in the Bible, okay? Why would he want to hide his time of return? Okay, so some people, they, they will say, you know, oh, no one knows the day or the hour, and that's exactly why. So there's a Bible verse that I will put in the video because I am terrible at remembering Bible verse addresses. Sorry, I'm just saying it how it is. But it says that as you see the day approaching, the day of Jesus' return for his church before the tribulation, to encourage one another with these words. Why would he want us to encourage people with, with these words, like if we didn't at least get an idea of when he's gonna be here, right? So that soapbox is over for now. But also what I wanted to talk to you about is there's this digital clock that a couple of artists came up with and I'm going to provide a link for that in the comment section for you guys. And it talks about this um, like time frame that the earth has before it's so in uninhabitable by climate change that people can't actually live here anymore. So on this clock, it said, I think this was posted a few days ago, that there was seven years and I think 101 days until they said that the earth wouldn't be inhabitable. So do the math, okay? So the new world order is supposed to start January 20th of 2021. Who knows, it might start sooner, I don't know. And if you calculate where we are now, okay? So today is October 12th. Calculate, take away 101 days, okay? Like go to, go to January 20th, 
go to your calendar, count how many days, okay? And you'll see that that time is pretty much right dead on, okay? So they're preparing our minds for a time frame that we won't be able to live here anymore, okay? And, and that has to do with the New World Order and the, and the New Green Deal and, and the whole... Um, in the New World Order, everybody, they're going to try and convince you that there's this climate change going. Now, I do think the climate is changing, but I think, it, I think it's not for the reasons that they say. There's going to be a mass deception. They're going to try and make people get the mark of the beast that's spoken of in the book of Revelation. And that beast, uh, that beast, sorry, <laughs> wrong word, that chip is actually going to end up sending them to hell. Okay, it sounds harsh. Hell is a real place, Okay. If you don't have Jesus, you haven't gotten on the ark, that's where you end up if you die, okay? So I'm gonna send you the link to this digital clock um, in the comment section so you guys can watch it like on your own, okay? So, a couple months ago, the Lord put it on my heart like he showed me something. I kept having these visions from him and in the visions, I noticed that there were always really big windows and I can always see out to see what's going on. And I was trying to figure out the biblical meaning of, of two and it has a couple of different meanings, but it can mean double anointing. But so, so there's a double anointing, but the, the windows, the large windows are um, representative of watching out. Okay. And when I caught that, I knew that it was possibly the Lord trying to show me that he wanted me to help people keep watch for the return of the Lord Jesus for his bride before the tribulation starts. And I had a friend on Facebook who I know from serving down at another church for, for worship team. And she shared a video about watchmen. And if you go to the book of Jeremiah, I think it's chapter six, it talks about how Jerusalem was about to come under judgment and God appointed watchmen to warn them to, you know, blow the trumpet, so to say. So he told me he wanted me to do that. And that, that's really scary because <laughs> there's always a chance he'll be wrong. But I've just realized that right now what matters the most is pointing people to the Lord's return of spreading the gospel. So I don't care what people think anymore. If you're watching this, I love you. If you think I'm nuts, I still love you. I, I, I understand you probably think I'm nuts, but I'm just telling you what the Lord has shown me, okay? So we're good on that, right? All right, what else was I gonna say? I'm really tired, I really need my notes, so my bad. So let me explain more to you about this eclipse. Okay, so I'm gonna look at my notes because I have to look at the dates. Apparently back in, when was it? Don't mind me, I'm trying to do my little research and look at my dates real quick. My word, let me pull it up. So the 2017 eclipse took place on August 21st, okay? So this is what it looks like. From the parts of the world that could actually see it okay i got the picture in here where's the picture there it is all right and here's the thing seven years after that one okay so that was called a, a revelation 12 sign right it's considered one of the big mega signs of you know that we're getting close to the end so three and a half years after that is gonna be the middle of the seven year period between that eclipse and the next one. So the next eclipse like that is going to be, it's in 2024 and it's going to be April 8th, 2024. So there's a seven year period between one eclipse that happens a couple years before the tribulation starts and another eclipse that is gonna divide the tribulation in half. Okay, so the second, biblically, the second part of the generation is considered the worst part of God's wrath. Like the whole tribulation is, is, is judgment, but like the second half is the worst part. So it mark, it's going to mark the middle of the tribulation. Okay, hold that thought. So 
the two eclipses are very interesting because they're major signs but let me confirm that confirm that with you okay so the eclipses both cast a diagonal shadow across the US so one of the eclipses cast a shadow this way the other one the other eclipse cast a shadow this way so guess what in the middle of the tribulation there's literally gonna be um, the other half of the X so you have this eclipse and that eclipse and together it forms an X over the US in the middle of the tribulation I mean do you think that God wants us to like miss that I don't think he does okay so I found out that you can actually go online and there's a calendar calculator so back to what I was talking about. So three and a half years is 1,260 days, okay? So I figured it out that we would have to start, in order to get that, that eclipse date of April 8th, 2024, that the tribulation would have to start on the 26th of October, okay? So this is... You don't you can't make this stuff up. If you want me to send this to you and you can look into it yourself, um, you can just comment and let me know, and I'd be happy to just to send that to you because I might not remember to to put it down down there in the comment section. I'm, thanks for bearing with me. I'm I'm really tired. I haven't slept well in like a month, <laughs> but um, so yeah. So that's a big major sign. That's the middle of the tribulation. That's where it stands now. That's my understanding of it. Um, so that's definitely something to look out for. Now let's go back to Feast of the Trumpets because I don't think I really um, explained what I wanted to explain there. So the Feast of the Trumpets, very high rapture watch day for the church. Unless somebody is majorly wrong, we will be going home. If you are the church, you will be harpazoed. That's the word. That's, uh, I think it's Greek. I don't remember. I think it's Greek. Harpazo is the Greek word, you know, that the Bible talks about in the moment in the twinkling of an eye that will be, you know, after the dead in Christ rise, then we will be caught up in the air and we'll meet Jesus out in the air. Okay. So I'll put that verse in the video too. Okay. So that's Harpazo. All right. Um, we'll be raptured out before everything breaks loose. Now the Feast of Trumpets this Saturday. Okay. Let me tell you something very interesting. So Saturday of this past week, which was just a couple days ago, because today is Monday, I had a dream that was quite alarming, pun intended. Let me tell you why. Because in my dream, I was visiting somebody in a house I'd never been in before. Um, and I heard this really loud siren outside, like, a war siren. You, you get the point, right? So it was it was really scary. Like I knew something was about to go down. I didn't know what. Um for some reason I tried to contact my husband on the phone and my phone wasn't working or something because that like always happens in my dreams when I'm trying to contact someone on my phone. I don't know why. So I'm heading out to the car. Um, and all I remember is I got in the car, I started, started driving down the driveway, and I saw a bunch of these military people at the end of the driveway while the alarm was still going off. And then I woke up. So that really concerned me. Um, and just by chance, I don't believe in chances. God has shown me too much about how he speaks to people through dates and signs and, and um, Bible, like biblical numbers, like not numerology, that's different, but like certain numbers like seven is a divine number of completion. Okay. Um, keep that thought. So this friend on Facebook shared a dream she had on the same exact um, early morning. I think it was like, oh, I don't know, like two o'clock in the morning or I don't know. I'm going to have to write that down. Let me write down... Um, let me see if I can get that link for you guys. Okay, if I can, I'll put the link to her video in the comment section as well so you can you can watch her whole video because she talks about like her encounter with the Lord and how, how the Holy Spirit is just burning in her heart and making her bold and that's exactly what he's doing in me. So that, that morning I woke up, I listened to her video and I realized that she had a dream about 
nuclear bombs coming and then she she woke up and she ended up contacting me on Facebook when we got in touch like I know her from from a church that she and I used to go to years ago and we caught up and we realized we have a lot in common with our walks with the, with the Lord and what the Holy Spirit has done in us and increasing our boldness and she's awesome I love her already so <laughs> um we believe we we've, we've been kind of trying to research um, what's going on like with you know what's going on in the world and like praying about it and looking for confirmation from brothers and sisters in Christ maybe through like um, sermons or um, visions that have to do with the same thing and we're starting to believe that we might have potentially gotten a seven-day warning for something happening on the 17th but with that being said that looks to be the time where we are hard pot sewed out of here so I don't think that's by chance so I think what's going to happen is we're going to be hard pot sewed raptured out there's going to be like I don't know what is it 10 days or something there's going to be a little tiny break and then the tribulation will start um, if my calculations are correct, it would actually be October 26th um, that it would start. But I have to provide a disclaimer, okay? If by some chance I'm wrong, um, for some reason, then just, I mean, give me give me a little grace. <laughs> I'm kind of new to this whole watch woman thing. And so the Lord's had me on a journey for the last couple of months, but... That's what I want to tell you. Like, feel free to look at what the Word of God says. Um, feel free to look at those verses that I, I'm going to put in here. Uh, do your own research and confirm. Pray about it. You can test me. That's biblical. Test me with the Word and every, everything like that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's something else that I wanted to tell you guys. So, yeah. Rapture the 17th, most likely. Um, 26th potentially 26th uh, would start um, the tribulation. So that kind of just leads me to the whole point of sharing this message, okay? Now, if you're a believer, then the point is to do as, you know, I was telling you earlier, as the day, as you see the day of the Lord's Return First Church approaching, to encourage one another with these words. So if you're a believer, this is supposed to encourage you. So just draw close to him, um, check your heart, make sure there's nothing, um, th there's no anger or bitterness or, or impur impurity or um, things that would keep you from really pressing into his presence. Um, you know, spend time in his word, worship him, um, you know, and just really try to learn about him and, and start to pray. Because like right now, the Holy Spirit is right he the holy spirit is raising up people to do assignments in these really last moments because we're like in the last seconds guys so if you don't know him this is a really good time to invite jesus into your heart and i just i just gotta tell you guys like a lot of people think things are going to get better and if the president you know, the right president gets elected, then, you know, everything's going to be perfect and back to not. No, the end of the fig tree generation is May of this following year at the latest. OK, um, there's this figure of 400 years that 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 Bible prophecy um, uses like as a time frame, because the nations go through a 400 year cycle where they go through 400 years and they end up being judged, okay? And there's also um, Jonathan Kahn, I'm gonna write this down because I'm hoping I can remember to um, put this down in the comments section. Jonathan Kahn um, explains a lot of these things really, really well. So this pastor, Jonathan Kahn, is very, very familiar with the inner workings of like the Jewish culture and everything. And he was explaining on one of his videos the, um, prophetic nature of a time frame of 19 years. So the way he explains it is that there's nine major what's called harbingers before God places judgment on a certain nation, okay? And that that's 19 years. 19 is another um, prophetic time frame 
of, and it represents mainly judgment, if I'm remembering correctly. So our harbingers started, our warning of judgment started back when we had the 9-11 attack. And that's a warning that God's getting ready to not protect a nation because the cup of iniquity is getting full. You know, people are, are embracing things that, that are just so, um, they're just an abomination to God's heart, okay? So 19 years, he sends nine different harbingers, and if the nation doesn't repent, the judgment comes, okay? But God knows that things happen in cycles, so he's very exact with his timing of things, okay? If, if, if God sends nine harbingers and the country doesn't repent, then they end up getting judged. And guess what? We've seen our nine harbingers, and I'm not gonna tell you what they all are because I don't remember, but what I'll do is I'll kind of like link a resource that'll point you to um, some good information about that, and I think he also um, introduces a book that he wrote about it. I mean, if you wanna read it, because you know, we may not be here much longer, guys. So yeah, you can do with that what you will. Um, all that to say, I'm kind of rambling because like I'm really out of it, but I don't want to stop this video without you knowing the gospel message. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, get on the ark. Remember the story of, of the flood and, and you know Noah's ark, his family got on the ark. Everyone's like, dude, why are you building this huge ark? Like you're nuts, right? Well, what happened? The rain came down. The people were just kind of doing their thing. You know, the Bible says it'll be just like it was in the days of Noah, right? And guess what? The flood came in unexpectedly and they died in the flood. But guess what? The family that's in the, in the ark got saved, right? So if, if you're in the place of protection, if you know the Lord Jesus, you're not destined for destruction, okay? And I'm gonna put that Bible verse also in the video for you guys, all right? so. Christians are not destined for destruction. So my question to you is, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that includes me. Everyone has skeletons in their closet. I've got a few myself, I'm not gonna say them on here, but I definitely, God took me from a very dark place, okay? Um, it says in the Bible that Jesus was tempted in all the ways that we are, but yet he never sinned. So he's the sinless sacrifice. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, okay? Romans 10, 9, this is a really big one for, for saying, you know, the, the prayer of salvation, okay? Um, it's Romans 10, verse 9, it says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved, okay? The confession part's important. So, how do you pray the prayer? I'm so glad you asked because I'm gonna show you. You ready? I'm gonna say some words of a salvation prayer, all right? And I'm gonna give you the opportunity to repeat it right where you are, so that if you want to let the Lord Jesus into your heart, you can. All right, so here we go. Father God, I believe you sent your son Jesus to die in my place on that cross. I ask you to forgive me for all of my wrongs, past, present, and future. Jesus, I confess that you are Lord and I believe you were raised from the dead. Conquering death so that we can have new life in you. Help me live for you the best I know how. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you made the best decision you will ever make. Okay, so not only will you be saved, you gotta, as long as you mean it with your heart, because that's, that's important, you gotta mean it in your heart, okay? If you meant that prayer, not only will you be saved from the tribulation, but if you were to die today, 
you know that you have eternal security in heaven with the Father. Because now, if you were to stand before the Father, He's not going to see your sins. He's going to see that you are washed by the perfect sinless blood from His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's what He sees. You're clothed in a robe of righteousness that comes only through the Lord Jesus Christ. So on that note, I want to say thank you for listening in and thank you for bearing with me because I'm really tired. Um, and I hope that you guys have a blessed rest of your day and please feel free to contact me in the comment section. All right, have a good one. Hey, don't go just yet. I wanted to kind of um, give like a little disclaimer on what I said with the dates. So, um, I am pretty new at this whole watch woman thing, so I'm just going to ask you, like, do you give me a little base with the dates? Because just in case, I don't know, like, what if he comes back, like, the first day of Feast of Trumpets, or maybe he'll come back the second day of Feast of Trumpets, because really there's two days in Feast of Trumpets. I mean, heck, maybe he decided to come back the day before, or I don't know, a couple days after. So, yeah, do, like, keep that in mind, um, and... Pray about what you've heard and everything, and and um, and yeah. So, thank you for listening in. Have a blessed day. Hey guys, I'm back, and it's because I realized there's some things I didn't share with you, and I don't know how to go back and divide my video up. And I had to take my parrot because he's um he screams at me if I don't come straight to him after work. So here he is. <laughs> Hi squawkers. So um. Let's go back to a few things we talked about and add in some things that we didn't talk about. So the Feast of Trumpets, I quickly made a reference to that. The Feast of Trumpets, it is going to be truly this weekend. And I read online that it had to be on a new moon, right? And let's go back to the verses in the Bible that are about you don't know the day or the hour. So there's two sides to that, because that verse actually, um, and verses like it, refer specifically to the Feast of Trumpets, and I had to really research to figure this out. Actually, I think I just stumbled upon it one day. I don't believe in chance. And the Feast of Trumpets, in a sense, you don't know the day or hour, because if it's a pregnant year and they have to add in 29 days to make their, uh, to kind of line up the solar calendar, lunar calendar, um, then that throws off the date, obviously, of Feast of Trumpets. So that's exactly what happened this year. This is what's called a, um, a pregnant year, and they had to add in, I don't know, to be honest, I think it's either an intercalated month or an intercalated year. I think it's month, but you can research it. Um, Barry Scarborough actually uh, talks about it in one of his videos about the Feast of Trumpets. The second aspect of that that stands out to me of not knowing the day or hour, because that idiom is specifically for the Feast of Trumpets, not just, hey, we don't know when we don't know when the Lord's coming back, it can be any day. Well, well I mean you should you should treat it like it like it's any day, so he doesn't come like a thief in the night and sneak up on you, right? But if you think about it, the Feast of Trumpets is technically two days or two nights starting at sundown. I no, is it the sundown? I think it's sundown one day and so sundown the next day. Um, so there's a lot of hours in there that he could come back. But also, think about this. If you live on the east coast of the U.S., our time is seven hours earlier than Israel. So if Israel, let's just throw out a number, midnight, gets raptured at midnight, then that means we would follow Israel because that's important in, in God's word, Israel. Um, so that would mean we would rapture out at 5 p.m., I'm not, I'm not saying I know the time, right? I'm not saying I know the hour. So there's two different ways, two different caveats, ways of looking at how you don't know the day or hour of Feast of Trumpets. So please don't think I'm being a heretic. <laughs> um, I've been praying for a lot of confirmation, and I wanted to show you some confirmation that I believe is from the Lord. I've been asking him, correct me if I'm wrong, um, and telling him, hey, Lord, if you want to come back a couple days after Feast of Trumpets, hey, you know what? I'm just a human. But he's always come on time on his feast. For the four first feasts, he's always come right on time according to the lunar calendar and has to be on a new moon. Last night, I couldn't sleep. And it was probably like 1.15 in the morning. This is why I've been so tired, haven't been sleeping. Uh, it's driving me crazy. So I, I think it was the Holy Spirit that put it 
in my mind to pick up this book to read because I remembered somebody in our family says that when he tries to go back to bed he reads a book and it puts him to sleep. So I open up the book and I start reading and lo and behold, within a page and a half, I stumble across a section from a Perry Stone book called The 40 Days of Teshuvah and it talks about the significance of the two new moons and the 5% moon. And what it said is that the two new moons, which we are actually having on Friday the 16th and Saturday the 17th of this month in October of 2020, those are the 16th and 17th are the new moons, and guess what? The 5% moon is, sun is Sunday, keep that in mind. The new moons represent the two days that Jesus was in the tomb. And the third moon, where there's a little light, it represents when Jesus came to life. So it represents um, us being resurrected in Christ. So that is super prophetic, and I believe it was confirmation on top of what I'm about to tell you, which the other thing I'm gonna tell you next actually is something he started to show me a few days ago and I forgot to mention it. So that's pretty cool. Um, last Saturday, my friend and I both, um, someone actually, I hadn't kept in touch with her, but she posted a video that showed that she had a dream that was similar to mine. Now the number seven in the Bible, prophetically, I'm not talking, I'm not talking numerology, that's something different. Um, it, her stream was like so similar to mine. So mine was um, a really loud siren outside, like something was happening. And I went out to the car in the dream. I had been visiting someone at their house, a house I've never been at because of my dreams. I'm seldom ever at my real house. I go out to my car, I get in the car, and I just remember driving down the driveway and there were all these military people at the end of the driveway, like around the fence. And it was short and then I woke up. I go on Facebook and my friend, I, hadn't, I haven't seen her in a long time, we just recently reconnected. We used to go to church together. She posted a dream she had early that very morning. And it, I think it might have even, I don't know, maybe it was around the same time, I don't know. But, and it had to do with um, war. And folks, I don't know if you're keeping up on, on things, but the Bible talks about the Gog and Magog War, okay, and that's going to involve the countries that are north of Israel. There's communists in Canada, okay, and parts of Canada are giving up areas to communists, um, and Department of Homeland Security um, is finding that some of those people are coming here, and I'm not saying this to scare you, but I'm just telling you it ties in together. So. I believe possibly that it might have been a seven day warning of something, but here's, here's the encouragement. The Bible says we're not destined for wrath. I'll explain why, okay? I will put that verse down at the bottom or probably in my video. When you're believers, God doesn't put the tribulation here for you. Don't listen to people only say, oh, well, we're gonna live through the tribulation then why does the Bible say, when we see the day approaching, encourage each other with these words? What are we gonna say? Oh, Jesus is coming back. I can't wait to get my head cut off for the sake of the gospel. No, why would he, you, you gotta look at the Bible like like in context. Like that verse, that, that wouldn't make sense. Why would he say encourage each other with these words if we're just gonna get persecuted and die for our faith? And, and not that that's bad to die for your faith, but. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't make any sense. So it's pre-tribulation. That's the biblical one, okay? The biblical, the biblical rapture of the church. <laughs> Some other verses that kind of have to do that with that is, um, I think it's Matthew 24, 25. I can put it in the comment section. Um, it's that the Lord can come like a thief in the night. But if you look through that scripture, I think you'll find that it refers specifically to people that are not walking in the light because there's another verse that says you are not of the dark that you would be overtaken um like a thief in the night so i was looking for some other verses but while i was looking through matthew 24 um, i'm just using my phone bible <laughs> the letters in red from jesus um, this is what it says i'll just read you these two um, verses because one of them supports the pre-tribulation outlook. So 
Matthew 24, 21, and 22. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should, should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Some people say, oh, it's mid-trib. No, it's not mid-trib. The whole thing has to do with either judgment or wrath. We're not destined for that. Judging the church, you know, like we do have to stand before the Bema seat if we're a Christian, but it's not the same as the white throne judgment, for example, okay? So that's not for us. Okay, so the other verses I wanted to read really quickly, um, it actually wasn't Matthew um, 24 or 25, I had a brain fart. It's um, Luke 12, and I'm going to start at verse 37. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. But the key there is watching, the servants that he finds watching. And if he shall, shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them, blessed are those servants. And I'm going to read verse 39 too. And this know that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and have not and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man comes at an hour when you think not. So what that shows is the Lord wants us to watch. And he said that, you know, if, you, if you're watching and you're aware, then the thief isn't going to come unexpectedly. So, um, and there's another Bible verse that says he comes like a thief in the night, but... He comes like a thief in the night to people who aren't watching. And that was my point behind that. So I'm going to go back to what I was talking to you about. So I believe that that one dream was a seven-day warning. I'm going to tell you why. So I think I talked about earlier the eclipse that occurred in 2017. And it's supposed to occur. It's the Revelation 12 sign. And it's supposed to occur in the middle of the tribulation. Um... I forgot the date. Just look it up. It's supposed to be exactly seven years. So I got the, on the calendar calculator, and long story short, according to that date, the tribulation would start. Assuming that's correct, I, I think it is because God uses signs in the sun, moon, and stars. Um, the date start should be October 26th. Now, if that is true, um, and I had, and we had a seven-day warning of the rapture, because guess what? Saturday is a high watch day, because why? Feast the trumpets. So what if, even though we don't know the hour, right, or even the day, I mean, maybe, I don't know. This is just something I'm going to throw out there. So we had the dream on Saturday morning. Seven is a number of completion in the Bible, okay? And it's a divine number. Um, seven day, rapture Saturday. What is Saturday. It's the 17th of October. October 26th is how many days after that? Nine days. So in that case, rapture, nine days. Nine represents judgment in the Bible, and so does 19. So I learned from Jonathan Kahn recently that, this is just one example, but God will spend um, 19 years sending a nation that he's warning for judgment that there will be judgment coming if they don't change their ways and he call he sends what's called harbingers he sends nine harbingers and if they don't repent judgment comes but that's as far as i know that's always been the way it's been people you know the repentance doesn't happen and he has to put a judgment on the nation in this case we know what the judgment is it's not just you know it's the tribulation judgment it's the though because we're at the end of the fig tree generation for may um we're we're um we're at this 400, the end of this 400 year cycle um, of judgment that nations go through, okay? So that points to, it has to be 2020 that we end. Both of those point to 2020 as the end of the dispensation of grace before the tribulation, okay? So if the Lord's gonna come back on a feast day, which according to people that know about Israeli culture and know about Bible prophecy, the Lord does have to come back on a feast of trumpets, even if we don't know which day or hour. So I'm just throwing that out there. So I believe seven day warning, nine days between the rapture and the start of the tribulation. The chance of that working out that way with the meaning of those numbers in the Bible is slim to none. I think God is sending confirmation. I don't think I mentioned this earlier. So I got some confirmation on the new moons last night and this is crazy. I know I'm taking a little longer than a few minutes, but there's this book called 
40 Days of Teshuva, and it's a book by Perry Stone, who I'm, I'm a big fan of. I've learned a lot about biblical prophecy from him. And it talks about how God does things on certain moon cycles because he uses the lunar calendar the lun you know, in the skies, like the moon and the constellations lining up a certain way. He uses those for, for certain prophetic events and appointments. Well, the new moon, okay, I read about, this is insane. So I couldn't go to sleep last night. I had to get up to go to work. It's like one in the morning, I'm like, Lord, why am I not sleeping? And I believe the Holy Spirit gently mentioned, why don't you try reading a book to see if you can go back to sleep? Because I remember someone in my family that said that they do that and helps them go back to sleep. So I went to go get this book and just so happened, I was praying for more confirmation because I'm like, Lord, I'm like, I'm putting myself out here. Okay, I want to make sure, I want to make sure I'm not like being heretical here. And within the first page and a half, I kid you not, I had no idea what chapter one will be. It talked about the significance of the moon cycles and how God does specific things, such as Feast the Trumpets, on the new moon cycle. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. The new moons represent two days when Jesus was in the tomb. And the, the moon peaking out at 5% re represents when he when he defeats death and he he resurrects and it also represents get this us being resurrected into new life and guess what let me show you this because i'm a teacher and i like to show visuals all right let me show you the new moon that i showed you before all right or the not the new moon the, the moon cycles I'm sorry i need to sleep so look at that okay so you'll see there's the 16th that's friday that's a new moon 17th is a new moon. So guess what? The 18th is one of those 5% moons. So what if he wants to raise us up at midnight Israel's time on Sunday, which would mean that it would be 5 o'clock p.m. for us? Just a thought. So that's what that represents. And I'm like, how? I'm like, I can't make this stuff up. That has to be confirmation. Like, it's just, it's just mind blowing to me. Something else, oh my gosh, there's more, there's more. So look up the meaning of the Greek word Delta. So you guys probably know that there is a storm named Delta in the ocean and it's the Greek, it's the Greek name because we are in Greek name storms because 2020 is cray cray and we've already gone, we've already burned through all of our regular letters. So look this up, Delta, uses like if, if you're representing the word delta in math or physics it's you know it's signified by a triangle and it represents change okay it also means look this up for yourself doorway it also means mouth of a river hello jesus is he put he, he puts rivers of living water like that flow from our hearts into us right so I mean, hello. And Delta is the name of a company of airplanes. Have you heard all the people that are talking about being harpazoed out of here? Flight 777? I'm just saying, I'm not making this stuff up. I believe God is just sending confirmation that we are about to shift into a new dis dispensation. And I hope that if you are a believer that you are encouraged. The Bible says to encourage one another with these words as you see the day of the Lord returning for his bride approaching. Well, I hope that blesses your heart and feel free if you have any questions for me, um, write a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, haters in the comments that want to say, well, oh, where's the promise of us coming? Where's the promise of us coming? D just Dad, I don't just don't say anything. <laughs> if you do, I don't care. I'm just gonna delete it because like that's wrong. So anyway, I love you guys. Be blessed and make sure um, you keep your lamps full of oil, like the parable of the virgins, and the wise virgins had enough oil in their lamp for, and then the groom came and they weren't taken off guard. Okay, the ones that didn't have enough oil, you know what happened? They got left behind. All right, so be ready for him. Love ya. Bye.